Welcome to this Circle Source Initiative, where business owners share how they successfully navigate uncommon and uncertain times. I'm Georgia Ellis, and I'm excited to explore how to get help from complete strangers with Helen O'Keefe. So Helen is the founder of HOK Talent Solutions. It's a boutique Melbourne-based health and safety recruitment firm. She recruits health and safety professionals across all industries at a national level. So welcome, welcome on board, Helen. Thanks, Georgia. Thanks for having me. I've got a question that's not actually a question. Did I pronounce your business name correctly? Yes, HOK. Yeah, HOK. I didn't know whether it's HOK exactly. or HOK. I should have asked that first. No, that's, that's <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> so your work sounds extremely interesting and also rewarding. I'd love to know a little bit more about how you've been helping your clients in these recent times. Yeah, certainly they've been unprecedented times. And I think when the pandemic first hit last year, um, there was that shock horror of, wow, you know, I work in recruitment, I've got my own firm, what's going to happen with the job market? And we did start to get phone calls from people that we knew saying that they had just lost their roles. But then the the market picked up and I think... um, Health and safety, that was certainly an industry that came to the forefront during COVID and the pandemic. So we became busy again and that has continued into this year as well. Um, and, and how we help our candidates and our client is by providing a, a very customer-driven service. Um, and we do a lot of search and headhunting rather than just advertising roles. So we really look for those candidates that our clients want to meet who may not normally be thinking that they're looking for a, a new opportunity. So we'd, we'd call you a, a bit of a headhunter. You go out there and you find people for your We client. find, yes, we find people. And that has become a little difficult um, as we've moved into the further stages of the pandemic because there's a lot of people that don't want to leave their roles. So, you know, they're looking to um, stay because they are enjoying working from home, the stability and the loyalty that their current organisation has shown them. And, you know, what, this is really, uh, I think, brought to the forefront is that a lot of people have now decided that flexibility and that whole working from home piece is much more important than the salary. Yeah, that's an interesting insight. And what do, what are you noticing that's potentially driving that? Is it the fact that they're now experiencing working from home? Yeah, I think so. If you, if you look at health and safety in particular, that's always been very much a site-based role or definitely um, in an office environment around others. But even in health and safety, um, many of the roles, of course, had to be moved to working from home. And so, you know, now it's not uncommon to uh, do a risk assessment um, via, you know, a Zoom like we're doing um, rather than having to be there at site. So, I think, yes, it's, it's you know, reinvented, I think, not just this um, industry but lots of others too. So, mm. yeah, that experience of working from home and people want more of that. Yeah, awesome. Beautiful. So you mentioned that, you know, these are unprecedented pre- unprecedented times and, y- you know, it's been really strange for all of us. So how have you and your business navigated that? What have you done? What have you had to change? Uh, well, um, I've never done so many Zoom interviews in all my life. So, you know, traditionally recruitment was very much face-to-face. So you would meet the person, you'd allocate an hour and a half or so to to sit down and speak with them. But now we've gone online. So everything pretty much has been online for us. um, And that that certainly has been a a massive change um, in how we conduct um, interviews and recruitment, but also how our clients do as well. And there've been so many stories of us playing, uh, placing candidates within organisations. They've never even been to their office. You know, they've been placed through a Zoom interview and haven't even been able to experience the culture yet. Mm. Yeah, I'm noticing that with some of the clients I work with that have been in a role for uh, 12 months now and still haven't stepped foot in the office. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it's in, it's very interesting times, yeah. and also haven't met face to face with their colleagues, like new to an organisation. So it's an interesting, very very much an interesting time for us all, and we sort of get a feel, I think, for an organisation based on the the building we walk into, the feel yes. of the people, and there's that there's that slightly missing piece there. I think with um with the modern times, not the modern times, the times that we're we're finding ourselves in at the moment. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So. 
has this has this change and the way that we're working has it also impacted your pipeline in a, either negative or positive way? Uh, in a very positive way, to be fair, because um, organisations themselves have been struggling to find. Um, good talent in health and safety. And so that has meant that they have enlisted um, us and other recruitment agencies as specialists to assist them. So, you know, certainly our pipeline has been very, very strong um, and and not something I would have imagined when... um, we first heard about COVID and first had to pack up our office and move home last March. Yeah. So you mentioned, we mentioned this in the intro as well, that you specialise in health and safety. So what made you make that choice? What made you decide that I'm going to recruit, because there's recruitment out there, that you've just gone, okay, I'm narrowing right down into health and safety. Was there a particular reason why you chose that niche? So I'd worked, I'd worked in HR myself and um, my first taste of working alongside health and safety um, was as a HR consultant and, you know, having to work closely with a health and safety manager in manufacturing. So um, I had an understanding of what health and safety people did and then um, I joined a recruitment firm and I was recruiting in HR and I had the most amazing opportunity to step into their sister business, which was health and safety and manage that business. Um, And then from there, six years ago, I decided to go out on my own um, and yeah, I, it's not it's not something I would would not ever do again. So working in the health and safety industry has just been very rewarding as a recruiter, seeing that these people you are putting into businesses really make a difference in people's lives. Yeah, yeah, and I can totally imagine that because health and safety is a a huge impact, and we don't realise just how much it can impact uh, a, a workforce and a workplace. So. Yeah. It's so interesting because it covers well-being, injury management. Um, there's there's so many aspects to work health and safety, and I, it's not all about um, high vis and work boots. Yeah, and I love that you just mentioned there about well-being because well-being I've noticed has been a real hot topic in the last eighteen months. Uh, so you're also when you're looking and helping people recruit, you're also looking in that space as well. So in the yes. the well-being space, so you want. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. So there has been has been a demand in um, increase for um, organisations to bring in suitably qualified well being professionals as well. Yeah. So that's an that's a big for me. I'm hearing that I, I find that to be a little bit of a shift from how I used to view health and safety uh, managers or or people. I worked in corporate for 22 years and our health and safety people did, had nothing to do with well-being. So that's one change. Can you can you sort of see any other changes that may be starting to bubble up in your industry in the landscape for the future? I think um, definitely and, and it hasn't been a new thing but along with well-being comes the psychological risk. So, you know, there's a lot of people in the workplace who do suffer stress and, um, and and psychological risk. So that certainly has been an area too that has probably been the more recent focus um, for health, safety and wellbeing professionals. Um, and, and that can sit under, you know, that can be sort of, um, I guess, brought into what they call an injury management role um, because it could be a physical injury or it could be a mental injury that they're dealing with in the workplace with their employees. Yeah. And I think too, a lot of just from this is my uh, uneducated uh, Mm -hmm. input here or opinion that a lot of small businesses or medium sized businesses uh, may not realize that there is a a need for that for their workforce to actually have somebody on board who's dedicated to, to that type of role. So what would you suggest or potentially advise to a small to medium business that's got a certain amount of uh, employees around whether getting somebody on board to help in this aspect, you know, why would they do it and is it worthwhile? I think it's about um, in do, do they have the do they have the workforce um, to to need that service? Um, you know, how can human resources firstly support them? Um, or, you know, is it time to bring in somebody who is going to specialise in maybe just helping them look at risk assessments? Maybe they need somebody to look at their desk setup, so ergonomics, which is, you know, helping them set up desks and making sure workstations are complete. So there are plenty of um, consulting organisations out there that are for that sort of support. So even if they think, 
they don't need anyone because they don't have a full-time need, they could certainly bring somebody in just to have a look at, at what's going on and, and maybe some, some general housekeeping. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. So you you run this HOC talent solutions. HOK. HOK. <laughs> you got it first the right time. Oh, thank you. HOK. I like the fact that it's got OK in it. Um, so do you, you run this on your own. Yes. Yeah, I do. So that's, and I know we're going to be talking about circle source. That's why I've needed circle sources help. Yes, I do. Yeah. And that's one of the things too, like one of my earlier mentors, when I started out on my own, he, uh, he mentioned to me that no one ever achieved anything of any significance on their own. And, you know, surrounding ourselves with people that can help us move towards our business goals is really important. So as a small business owner, what type of support have you needed um, to meet your business goals? And how have you gone about finding it? And you might have already answered that slightly. I probably did because this is all about finding strangers, isn't it? Yeah. (laughs) Um, So I do need support. So you can't do, you're right, you can't do everything yourself. So from marketing, um, you know, through to additional professional development for myself to finding an accountant, there have been so many reasons that I've needed to get extra help in, um, as well as um, virtual administrative support. So, again, um, not being able to to do everything myself and not having the resources to do that. So, um, that's where I've used Circle Source. Okay. So, Circle Source has been your, that's where you've gone to get it over the period of your whole business or has it just been a recent thing? No, it's just been a recent thing. So, yeah. pr- prior to that, I would use people that perhaps had been recommended to me or were already in my network. So, Circle Source has been a relatively new uh, new thing to use. Yeah, and um, it is full of strangers. They're not people that are within, <laughs> within your network. No. So, can you give us some specific examples of how it has helped you? So, you mentioned the help you need, but what, what have you, how has it actually helped you with your business? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, first, the first time I used Circle Source was to uh, get some help with my website development. Um, so, certainly, I put a job up there and received some amazing offers, and then have now got a very strong relationship with my marketer and website developer. Um, so, that was when I first used it. Because uh, again, I, I can't do that, and you know, I needed to, to be outsourced. And it is a very personal thing. So, you know, you are trusting somebody else to do that. Um, probably the, the next time that I used that was we felt like we needed some social media training because obviously with our job, we have to use LinkedIn to its fullest. Um, so we had some social media training um, run by somebody I found on Circle Source. Um, Another example of using Circle Source is we found an amazing virtual EA through Circle Source, um, who we use on a weekly basis now, and, and you know she's amazing. I would not ever have found her any other way. Um, blog writing so on my website we have articles and I'll write some of them but not all of them so now we've outsourced um, our blog writing to get somebody to write blogs for us I'm looking at a list because I have to remember every absolutely everybody I've used Um, and then most recently um, I decided that I need to, to investigate new accounting support and bookkeeping. So, again, put a job up on Circle Source, got some amazing people come through and then selected a person that fitted with me. Um, and we now work together. And ironically, um, she her office is in my office. We've, we've got a serviced office together, um, only doors away, but we had never met each other. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. So, we met on circle source yeah so how did you how did you come about finding circle source as well so you know it's a it's it's a new ish platform and um you know it's growing and it's only australian based as well so how did you how did you stumble across it so i didn't i i do know the founders but i was yeah. probably a very strong critic as well um when they first were talking about Circle Source and what it could do, I remember being a recruitment manager and the people from LinkedIn coming to talk to me and um, walking after they spoke to to me about LinkedIn and how everybody was going to put their resume up on LinkedIn. I thought, you've got to be kidding. That'll never happen. So, the same with Circle Source. I thought, yeah, great idea, but, you know, there's LinkedIn and there's so many other things. How's it ever going to you know, take off. And it was actually just through encouragement 
I'll put a job up and see what happens. And then I was sold. So the first job, as I said, put up for my website, it was Michelle, um, amazing, um, amazing job. And then so I had the trust to actually put other jobs up again. And I haven't been disappointed. Yeah, beautiful. And what's happened is it's bringing these strangers into your life and some of them are already, you know, two doors away, but you're complete yeah, strangers never met anyway. Them. <laughs> yeah, That's never right. Met them. That's I love, right. I love this, the, the diverse support that you have been able to, to, um, to bring forth into your business. And it is, I'm a small business owner like you, and it's really quite challenging to try and do everything on your own. So before this, how would you have how would you have found these people? Would you have done it yourself or would you still be outsourcing? Uh, I think I still would have been outsourcing, but it would have been uh, through people that I knew or their networks. And yeah. it takes time to ring someone, right, and say, hey, who would you recommend? And then, you know, look them up or, or go forward. So I find circle source is really easy to use and really quick. Um, so certainly that that's why I've become an advocate. And that, you know, the, actually, there was a funny story too about Circle Source. Um, I did a, a video just like this, Georgia, on Zoom last Christmas, and it needed to be edited because there were a few mistakes in it. And I was like, "Oh God, I've got to get it out. What can I do?" And so I put a job up to find if there was source of, or source a video editor. And probably within an hour, somebody had come back and they edited my video for me. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's just easy. Easy and it sounds like it's just eliminating a lot of stress that normally comes with running a business, um, yes. uh, being a solopreneur. So, yeah, awesome. So as we round out our time together, I want to first of all thank you so much for sharing your insights and your journey and how you've been navigating these uncertain times. Is there anything that um, you'd like to share with our audience or is there also a way that our audience could reach out to you and find you if they're wanting to connect with you to get them to help them with their recruitment of the health and in the health and safety space? Well, firstly, I am on Circle Source too as a supplier. Oh, <laughs> so, beautiful. So join Circle Source. So, so join Circle Source and and get on get on there and just put a job up. It's like it's almost like that online shopping hit. So you put a job up and then the offers start coming into your email and it's quite exciting to see people responding to you and looking through. So I would certainly say, like, just leave all that stress behind of trying to find somebody. Let Circle Source do it for you because it really has saved my life. Um, and, yes, you can find me on there as a supplier as well. I'd be delighted to help you. Wonderful. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, it sounds like I'm hooked and I'm going to have to find some jobs to put on Circle <laughs> Source. So thank you so much, Helen, for your time. Really appreciate it. And um, all the best as you navigate what's ahead as things chop and change. And it sounds like, uh, yeah, you've got a, as a busy time ahead for you. You too, Georgia. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. <laughs>